Dance Boys, you can hear what he has to say. His name is Dance Boy, he thinks the world is all over. What up, Net fans? Nets boy here. Bring your latest in your Brooklyn Nets news. All right, we've got a lot to talk about and a lot to discuss. Um, it's currently uh, August fourteenth, though for most of you, you'll probably be seeing this on August fifteenth. Um, and the regular season is officially over, and the Nets ended up thirty-five and thirty-seven. And went five and three uh, in the uh, restart and clinched the seven seed and have a matchup against the two seeded Raptors. And before we go into that, because that's obviously going to be the main focus of this episode, we have to discuss and talk about the last three games of the bubble for the Nets um, and really just how good the Nets looked in the restart. Um, since my last Nets Boy episode, in which the Nets um, were one. I said, I thought that game against the Magic was going to be like the key to see like who's going to clinch the seven seed. Turned out that didn't even need to happen because the Nets ended up just outplaying and uh, beating the, uh, the Clippers. And it was a great win. Uh, Levert played well. I mean... Levert played well. Joe Harris played well. I mean, it's, everyone played well. Kawhi Leonard was the only one who really showed up for the uh, Clippers in that game. It was, it was, you know, very exciting to see. And I never would have thought the Nets were going to win that game. But the Clippers didn't really have a lot to play for. The Nets did. And the Nets just were the better team there. They just looked good and... I don't know which win was more impressive, the the win against the Clippers or the win against the Bucks. Um, I you would the argument should be the win against the Bucks that was more impressive because you know they didn't have Levert, uh, Allen or Harris. But at the same time, the Bucks really played poorly in this restart, and like uh, so. But but the Clippers also kind of played kind of poorly too. So I guess the Bucks win was more impressive. But either way, it was a great win by the Nets. And in that win, they clinched the seven seed because the Magic had lost earlier that day. So the Nets clinched the seven seed before they even had to play the Magic the next game. So they then rest those same players, Levert, Allen, and Harris, and they still blew out the Magic and beat the Magic. It was unbelievable. I come like, what? This team, like, and, and, and the, I, obviously the Magic had nothing to play for at that point either. They were already stuck in the seven seed. You know, the net, you know, I mean, excuse me, the AC, they couldn't catch the Nets anymore. And the Nets, you know, so but that game was just a exhibition game for both teams. They meant nothing, but still have a little pride there, Orlando. But Nets won that game without Levert, Allen, or Harris. And then going into the last game of the year, could have gone down as one of the most entertaining games I've seen in a long time, that Trailblazers game. A game that meant absolutely nothing for the Nets. And meant everything to the Trailblazers. It was if the Trailblazers won, they got into the play-in game and have a chance to make the playoffs. If they lost, they were eliminated and the Suns would have gotten in. And the Nets, once again, nothing to play for other than just staying in basketball shape. And it was so entertaining to watch. I'm watching this game. The Nets, are, I, I've never seen a team play so hard with nothing on the line that the Nets played in that game. And the whole time, I'm just like, no one get hurt, please. Like, that was the only thing that was crossing through my mind. Like, it was a great game back and forth. Big play after big play by both guys, by both teams. Karis LeVert had 37 points. Damian Lillard had 42. Uh, you know, CJ McCollum had a big shot at the end to put him up after a terrible LeVert turnover. I mean, that was just dumb. I don't know what he was doing when, when Lillard stole the ball. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but, like... It was just a great game, and it came down to the final play where Levert missed a kind of a tough jump shot um, at the buzzer. And, you know, I had to defend uh, Karis Levert a little bit here because I was shocked. I understand that, you know, the emotion of the situation for a lot of Spur, Spurs. No, Spurs also, they didn't make the playoffs first time in 22 years. I'm not going to talk about that. I just mistakenly said their name. 
this, if you're a Suns fan, if he, he there was a little of emotion because if you're a Suns fan and, and they needed the Nets to win that game and beat the Trailblazers, there was a bit of anger I saw on social media towards Karis LeVert from Suns fans saying what a terrible shot that was. You know, you were able to make go to the basket there. Why are you taking a fadeaway jump shot? Why didn't uh, why didn't uh, um, um, Jock Vaughn call a timeout? What are the Nets doing? This is a terrible situation, blah, blah, blah. Calm you the heck down. I mean, I understand the frustration because the Suns went 8-0 and and played amazing to get into that chance to make the playoffs, but you should just be thankful. Levert scored 37 points, and the Nets played their their regular rotation in a game that they didn't even need to win. That's why Levert took that shot. That's why Jock Vaughn didn't call a timeout, because really it didn't matter for the Nets. Why prolong the game? Why make things more complicated than it need to be? Just, they got the stop. There's 19 seconds left. Just give it the ball to Levert and let him try to make a play. And I kind of like it. I mean, could Levert have tried to dub a better shot than kind of like a step back 22 foot jump shot? Yeah. But you know what? He made shots like that in this game. He's made shots like that in the past. Maybe not as tough, but I'm okay with it. And I understand a lot of Sun fans are saying it's a bad shot. They should have called a timeout. The Nets weren't playing for anything. And the fact that the Nets even played the way they played, having Allen and, and Harris and Levert playing in the fourth quarter, because that's what most teams did, would have done. Most of the teams in the bubble of teams that made the, the playoffs already, they only, like, I think LeBron James played like 15 minutes and, and Anthony Davis played zero. You know, teams were doing things like that all the time. The Jazz, Donovan Mitchell, I think, played 12 minutes. So why would you expect the Nets to be different other than the fact that they were just for the sake that they wanted to play hard and the fact that Sun fans have the the audacity to to, to yell at Karis LeFert who dropped 37 points and single-handedly was the only reason why the Suns had a pulse because they was competing against the Trailblazers to, to, to they, they want to yell at him for taking a tough shot and the Nets not calling a timeout shut up world's unfair deal with it okay because that's just the way it is I'm sorry, you won eight games in a row, you went undefeated, you, the future looks bright, but just drop it, okay, I'm sorry, that's just the way it is, get, don't get mad at the Nets or that one, get mad at your son's team for not winning one game before the bubble started, because you can say all you want, right, you can say all you want about the the Suns going 8-0 in the, in, in, you know, in the restart, what about before the restart, all right, in which they won at the time only 24 games, or something ridiculous like that. So let's not, you know, get mad about that. Don't get mad about them winning eight games in a row and missing the playoffs uh, because a, a player who has nothing to play for takes a tough shot. Like, come on. Anyway, it's completely off topic. We got to speed up this, ep- this episode. We're already around eight minutes, and I haven't even talked about the Raptors series and Nets series coming up. So anyway, that's that with the bubble this, the, the, or the – I can't remember calling it the bubble, but it's the restart. That's it with the regular season. It's officially over. The Nets end up going 35 and 37, two games under 500. And now they have a matchup against the very, very tough and dangerous and very complete Toronto Raptors. It seems like the Nets always seem to run into the Raptors at some point in the playoffs. I mean, last year it was the 76ers. But in years past, when the last a few times the Nets made the playoffs before, you know, the Sean Mark stuff, they always ran into the Raptors. And um, look, this is going to be tough. And the Nets have played so well uh, during the restart. They went 5-3. and three, But the Raptors, they're just simply the better team and a more complete team. It would be foolish for me to sit here and say that I expect the Nets to win this series because they played so well. Because I know... The irrational thinking is they beat the Bucks and they beat the Clippers and they went five and three. They can compete with the Raptors. Look, I do believe the Nets are going to win at least one game and possibly two in this series because the one thing that we've seen without a true home court advantage, we've seen a lot of upsets in this bubble. Um, so I do believe the Nets can win one, maybe two games. But I'm telling you now, they're not winning the series. And I know a lot of people were, after the way they, the Nets played, and especially when they played hard against the Trailblazers, a lot of people were saying, oh, watch out for the Nets. They're the most dangerous, lower-seeded lower team 
of all the lower seeds, you gotta watch at least at least in the East, you gotta watch out. And I'm just telling you right now, look, it, when it comes playoffs, it's a completely different animal. All right, for a lot of these teams in the bubble and the restart, it wasn't really. Remember, going into this, um, fourteen of the 16 playoff teams were already determined it was only the seven and eight seeds in the uh in the east and the and the eighth seed in the west the others were already determined so even though playoff positioning wasn't a lot of these players and teams went in just trying to get back into shape of things almost like a preseason more than an actual regular season game so you can't look too much into the five and three stretch by the nets and it's going to be a whole different animal. Look, Pascal Siakam is 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 an all star. You know, Kyle Lowry is an all star player. You know, don't forget about Marcus Saul. The, the whole Raptors team is just very very complete. Fred Van Vliet, they, they're a good, very good to great team. They have no real weaknesses. They're expertly coached. Nick Nurse is a great coach, and yes, Jock Vaughn has done a great job as well. But like I said, you sh- it would be foolish to think the Nets really have a chance to win this series. So what do I really expect, though? That being said, well, I do expect the Nets to win at least one game in the series, if not two. To me, there's no reason why they don't win at least one game. I feel like the way the Nets have played, even once again, remember, this team is a shell of himself, you know. But the way Levert has played in the, in the restart, averaging over 25 points a game, the way Joe Harris has played and Jared Allen and and Nwabu Kabaro and, and Chris Chioza and Garrett Temple, who I always seem to forget exists on the Nets. Um, <laughs> he's played very well, uh, you know, uh, on the on the on this team. So Rodion's Kuroops, they played really, really well. So I expect them to win at least one game in the playoffs um, and possibly two. And that's what I'm hoping for. If they win at least one game in the playoffs against the Raptors, it'll be a successful season overall. Um, I think the restart was unbelievably successful because I expected them to only win two games at the most in the restart. They ended throwing things. But, and they ended up winning five games, so that was great. And now I'm going in saying I expect them to win at least one game against the Raptors. I can't tell you which game that would be. Who the heck knows? Um, but when it's like it matters. Normally you try to guess, like I, you know, with a home home court, but there is no home court. So, um, so yeah. So look, Levert has looked fantastic. Um, as a matter of fact, though, you know what? Nah, he's asleep. I was gonna have Ned's dog come on and talk about his favorite player, Karis Levert, but he's. Uh, He's asleep right now. It's kind of late right now, um, you know, when I'm actually recording this video. So I'll let him sleep. Maybe the next episode he'll talk about it. Or maybe the end of the season wrap-up he'll talk about Karis LeVert. Because netfox has got a lot to say about his favorite uh, player, Karis LeVert, and how he believes he's a he's a true star player and how the Nets should not trade him. But I think, once again, we should talk we'll save that for maybe towards, you know, the end of the season wrap-up. So we'll let we'll let the, the little guy sleep. See, look, he's sleeping. I can see. see. Yep. Nets dog. I didn't do it. He's like, that was really jerk move there, Nets boy. Why would you do that to me? I was knocked out. Sorry. Go back to sleep. Yeah, that that was a jerk move on my part. Sorry. Go to sleep. Okay. Now he's looking at me like, what do you want? Oh, well. Um, so, anyway, so there you have it. Let's wrap up this video on that boy. <laughs> poor, poor little guy. Oh, he's back to sleep already. Good, yeah. You know, so I don't feel as bad anymore about startling him like that. Anyway, so keep your eyes open to the next Nets Boy episode. Let me know what you guys think about the way Levert's played, the way the Nets played in the restart, them going 5-3, and three, what you've seen from this team and, and the coaching of Jack Vaughn and the growth and the hard grit that, remember, was their identity – um for you know in the past and they seem to have it back and what are your expectations against the toronto raptors are you like me do you believe it's gonna be a five game series maybe six and you just hope that the nets win one game and and uh yeah um 
Game one, by the way, is Monday, uh, so a couple days away. So I'll probably do a video maybe after game two, which is Wednesday. So maybe the check out around that Thursday after the first two games. I'll do another video and we'll take a look and see how the Nets are faring in the, in the, in the playoffs. But let's get ready for playoff basketball. I'm super excited. I hope you are. So keep your eyes open. And until then, this is Nets Boy signing off. Well, no.